I'm always looking for ways to incorporate more historical and vintage style into my everyday wardrobe, and I find that I'm often drawn to the styles of the 1940s and 50s. Something I've seen fairly often in 1940s images are snoods, and a lot of them happen to be crocheted, which is exactly my thing. Another reason I was drawn to this project is that, well, I like to get dressed up, I like to get put together. On an everyday basis, I'm actually quite lazy when it comes to my hair. So if you're telling me that I can just stuff my hair into a bag and look put together, sign me up. While I like the idea of snoods, it took me a while to find a pattern that I would actually want to wear. I tend to be drawn to vintage accessories that I can easily mix and match with my modern wardrobe and that don't look too costumey or out of place with normal clothes. And several of the patterns I came across were aggressively 40s. I did eventually find one that aligned more with my personal style and I have linked it down in the description below if you'd like to try it for yourself. This one was a bit more understated and probably wouldn't get me weird looks at the grocery store. So without further ado, let's make a snood. One of the challenges of vintage crochet patterns is that often the materials they were designed for no longer exist. So you might have to do some sleuthing or just trial and error to find an appropriate substitute. Fortunately, this pattern listed a hook size and thread size. And the photo also gives me some clues as to how thick this yarn might need to be. So I'm hoping this fingering weight wool is going to be close enough. This is one of those awkward leftovers from another project that was too much to throw away, but not really enough to do much else with. Not sure it will be enough for this project either, but we'll find out. So this isn't right. I know better than this. I should know not to watch TV when I'm working on a brand new pattern that I'm not familiar with because I make mistakes and then you get this weird half square, half circle situation. It's really not the pattern's fault. The pattern is actually quite simple and easy to follow. If you've ever made a beanie before, you can make this pattern. It's basically the same idea, just using a different stitch and make it much looser. Where I ran into trouble, instead of making the increase in kind of like a spiral so it makes a nice circle, I keep increasing in the same stitch here, which is making a corner instead of a circle. I considered just rolling with it and just keep going the way it is because I don't think it would be that noticeable when it's on my head, but I would know. And I want to do it right and I want to make something nice that I'm going to be proud of. So. It, was like, it really didn't take that long. It was pretty quick to work up, so I think I'm just gonna frog it and start over. And I'm not gonna have the TV on this time. I'm gonna pay attention to what I am doing and do it right. Let's start over. Attempt number two is better. This pattern doesn't give you the stitch count. It just tells you what the stitch is and tells you to keep doing that, increasing as necessary while keeping the piece flat. It looks like a sea creature. I think I figured out what the issue might be. So I've been using the same method of increasing that I use when I'm making beanies, but when I'm making beanies, I'm usually using much tighter stitches, like half double crochets or single crochets. And with this one, the stitch is very loose and each one adds a lot more to the diameter. So I think that's why I'm getting this uh, crazy wave pattern here, which is not what I want for this. So I think I need to uh, reduce the number of increases I am using 
with each row and really scale it back and I'm hoping that is going to keep it nice and flat like I want it. So we're going to frog this one and try it again. Take three. Sweet, sweet success. Something that's been fun as I've been working with more historical and vintage crochet patterns is sometimes they teach me new stitches and this happened with this pattern as well. This snood pattern uses what they call a loop stitch and it's really simple to do. You start from a regular single crochet and you are basically going to make a single crochet again, but what you're gonna do is you're gonna pull the loop out and the pattern says to pull it out about an inch. When I started, I was measuring it against my cutting table here to get the size right, but once I got used to it and kind of got into the pattern some more, I was just eyeballing it. So pull your loop out about an inch, yarn over and then pull it through the top of that loop. It helps me to pinch it here to keep things from sliding around. And then once you've pulled your loop through, you are going to just make a chain. So yarn over and pull through that little loop you just made. And then you got this big long stitch here. And then what you're gonna do is find the loop from the last row. Make sure you're going around all three strings here and just make a single crochet in that big gap. And that's it, that's the loop stitch. And you're just doing that all the way around. All right, the pattern says to stop increasing when it reaches nine and a half inches in diameter and we are there. Next steps are gonna be a couple rows, just keeping the stitch count the same to build up the sides and then we're almost done. Here's all the yarn I have left. I'm getting a little nervous about this, but we're gonna keep on keeping on and this might be some intense yarn chicken. I have to apologize for any fan noises or dog panting noises you might hear in the background. We are in the middle of a heat wave and we are very uncomfortable, aren't we, buddy? Yeah, we don't like this weather. No, we don't. I'm almost to the end of the pattern and I don't think I'm going to have enough yarn. After you finish widening the crown to the nine and a half inches that they said, you're supposed to do seven more rows of loop stitch, just keeping the stitch count even. I am at five rows, and this is how much yarn I have left. And after we do the loop rows, we have to do another row of single crochets around some elastic, which is actually what's going to keep it on my head. I'm afraid that if I continue with the loop row rows as the pattern says, I'm not going to have enough for the single crochet row. I thought about maybe seeing if I could find some more yarn in my stash that was a similar color and size to this, and I just, I don't. All the other pinks that I have are either too thick or they're a cooler shade of pink and they, just, they didn't look good together. So. What I am going to do instead, I'm going to forego the last two loop rows like the pattern says and just go to the single crochet rows. I think it'll still fit fine even if I'm making it a little shorter than the pattern says. We're going to keep going. We're almost there. It's so hot in here. After getting most of the way around the band, I realized I did not, in fact, have enough yarn. The pattern says to make 10 single crochets in every loop stitch. My snood is going to have five. All that remained was to weave in the ends and then I had a snood.
Took some finagling, but I did win this round of yarn chicken. And I was able to squeeze a finished project out of some tiny scraps from my stash. I think it's gonna take some more practice before this becomes my go-to lazy day hairstyle, but for a first attempt, it came together pretty quickly and I do like how it looks. This is what I was expecting, so happy with that. I did pin it at the top to help it stay more securely and it does feel very secure right here. The back, not so much. I don't know if it's because it's actually insecure or if I'm just not used to having something hanging at the back of my neck like this, but I'm kind of worried if I move my head too sharply that my hair is going to come flying out. We'll see how it holds up throughout the rest of the day. In the future, I will use a hairnet for this. I think one that might help with making it feel more secure and helping it hold its shape. I also, I've got some escape attempts in the back here. So I think a hairnet might make it a little bit neater. So I will try that next time. If I were to make this again, there are a few things that I would do differently. Well, the wool worked fine for this. If I do this again, I think I will use cotton thread or cotton yarn. Cotton tends to be a little bit less stretchy. And so I think it might help it hold its shape better and keep things a little bit more secure and in place. I will also make sure that I have enough yarn to finish the pattern as it was written. I don't miss those two loop rows that I skipped, but the band does look a little bit messy because I don't have full stitch coverage around the elastic like the pattern called for. Although honestly, if anybody is close enough to me to actually see that, they're standing too close and I have other problems. So. I might also use different elastic. I used a spandex cord, which I think was stretching out and then not bouncing back. I didn't get this on camera, but twice I ended up pulling out the elastic and re-knotting it to make it a little bit smaller because I think it kept uh, stretching out too much. So if I were to do this again, I would use a stronger elastic for the band. Well, I did make a lot of mistakes along the way. I am happy with how it turned out. It was actually a really simple project. It wasn't like the pattern was very, very easy. I just, I just made some dumb mistakes. Anyway, if you enjoy projects like this, I do have more plans for vintage crochet as well as history bounding, sewing, and bookish content. So if that sounds like your cup of tea, maybe give this video a like, subscribe to the channel so you can see what I've got coming up in the future. Until then, thank you so much for spending time with me today. I hope you have a lovely rest of your day and I will see you next time. Goodbye.